Hi, Mike here. When managing data spread across multiple subfolders in SharePoint, the manual task of consolidating data can become tedious and error prone. Recently, I received an email from a viewer facing exactly this challenge. It said, Hi Mike, I have six main folders, one per business unit on SharePoint. Each folder contains subfolders, one per year, and each of those folders contains 12 subfolders, one for each month of the year. Once per month, I need to create a report and consolidate data from all files. How do I consolidate the data from SharePoint subfolders using Power Query? Do I have to change the path to import the data for the next month? Well, in this video, I provide a way to solve the problem. For the demo, I've made it a little simpler. A library in my SharePoint site contains three folders, one per business unit. Each of those folders contains three subfolders, one per year for 24, 25 and 26. Each of those folders contains two subfolders, one per month. If I was doing this for real, each of the year folders would contain 12 subfolders. But I'm trying to simplify it for the demo. I'm going to focus on January and February. If it works for two months, it should work for 12. The three Jan folders and the three Feb folders each contain a single file. For the demo, these files are just copies of each other. The data in them is identical, order IDs and order values. OK, so I've started a new Excel file and I'm going to click on data, get data from file from SharePoint folder. I'll then paste in the URL to the SharePoint site. That is the root of the SharePoint site, not the specific folders and click OK. The preview displays me a list of all the files in that site. This is just a demo site, so there's not many files, but in the real world, there could be hundreds of them. But I'm going to click on Transform Data. And that opens the query editor. And as I said, what's displayed in the table is all the files in the site. It's exactly the same as the preview that you've just seen. First thing I need to do is apply a filter on the folder path column so that only the six business unit columns are displayed. So I'll scroll across so I can see the filter arrow, click it, go to text filter and contains. I need to set up an advanced filter because the basic filter only allows me to set two criteria. So I'll go to advanced and I'll say show the rows where the folder path column contains BU1 or the folder path column contains BU2 and then add a clause and say or the folder path column contains BU3. Now in the real world, if we had six business units, like the person who asked the question has, we'd just continue adding clauses for all six business units. The reason I've picked BU1, BU2 and BU3 is because if you look in the folder path column, you can actually see those are the names of the folders and click on OK. So at this point, I have six files. There is one file in each of the Jan folders of each business unit, and there is one file in each of the Feb folders of each business unit. But right now, as it's the end of January, I only want the Jan files. I don't want the file names. I want to combine the contents of the files. To do that, I need to scroll back to the left and I need to click the double headed arrow that is to the right of the first column, the content column. So I'll do that. Then I'll select sheet one. Sheet one is the name of the sheet that contains the data in the six Excel files. So you really need to make sure that all the files are structured in the same way. They all have the same sheet name. You can see a preview of the data. That's what I mentioned earlier, order IDs and values and click OK. The result of that is that we now see the data from each of the six files. 
I don't need the source.name column. That's just showing the file name. So I'll right click on the heading of that and select remove. So I can see the data, but I only want to see the data from January's files. I could go back to the filtered rows step in the query and apply another filter. But then at the end of Feb, I'd have to edit the query and change the filter. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. So this is where parameters come in. I'm going to close the query editor by clicking on close and load on the file tab. And Excel has created another sheet called query one, which is the name of the query on this sheet, or in fact, on any sheet, I need to set up the parameters and I'm going to set it up in column F. I'll actually just zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And in F1, I'm going to type a heading month. And in F2, I'm going to type Jan. As I say, those could be anywhere as long as you've got a heading and a value underneath it. I then want to load that into the query editor by clicking on data from table or range. Make sure that it's picked up the correct range, which it has F1 to F2, but it hasn't detected the word month is a heading. So I need to tick the box. My table has headers and click OK. Now in the queries list on the left, I've now got an entry called table two. I could leave it as table two, but I think I'll rename it, make it more sensible. So if I right click on table two and select rename, I'm going to change this to QRY month. You don't have to put QRY at the beginning, but I've got several entries that are the word month, like the column heading. So just to make it a little less confusing, I'll start the query name with QRY. I'm then going to right click on the word Jan in the month column and select drill down. What I've just done is I've just created what's called a parameter query. You can tell that because if you look on the left hand side at the queries list, the QRY month query has got an ABC next to it rather than a standard table icon. I'm going to return to the original query. That's query one. I could rename that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm then going to click on the filtered rows step on the right hand side. And I want to add another filter. So I'll scroll across to the right because the filter is going to be added to the folder path column. Click on the filter icon associated with the folder path column and select text filters contains. I do want to insert a step, so I'm going to just click insert on that. And keep the rows where the folder path contains Jan and click OK. And that's now reduced the number of rows in the table to three because there are three files in the folders whose name contains Jan. I know the folders have got different parents, but it doesn't matter. I'm then going to replace the word Jan and the double quotes with the name of the parameter query, which was QRY month. In fact, as I start typing, the autocomplete displays it in the list. So I'll just select it and press enter. By the way, if you get a message about data privacy, just click continue and tick the box that says ignore privacy level checks for this file and then click save. So what we're looking at now is the files in each of the Jan folders. So I'm going to close the query editor, file, close and load. And it's created another sheet with the result of that query in it, which I can hide if I want to. So let's just tidy these things up. I don't need sheet one, so I'll delete that sheet. And then what I'll do is in F2, I'll type Feb, press enter and then click data refresh all in this demo because the data was the same in all files i can't tell whether it's worked but if i go back to the query editor data get data launch query editor and then click on qry month 
you can see that the value that's been passed in is Feb. And if I click on Query 1 and I click on Filtered Rows 1, we can tell by looking at the name column that the files that have been selected are the ones with O2 in the name, which, if we went back to the SharePoint site, are all the February ones. Let's close down the Query Editor. Again, back in the spreadsheet, change the word Feb back to Jan. Do a refresh, data refresh all. It has updated the data in the spreadsheet, although we can't tell that. And if I go back into the Query Editor, Data Get Data, Launch Query Editor, click on the parameter query. The value of that is now Jan. Click on Query 1 and go to the filtered rows one step. And we are now looking at the files that have got 01 in their name, which is January's. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.